Hey, I'm Nick Gamer. Welcome back to PCM 22 Dragons, and this is episode 31. Uh, just real quick, I am back from vacation finally, and starting with this very episode, I'm getting back to my regular full schedule of PCM 22 content. I know that actually the break between this episode and the previous episode of either of our two active series has actually been the longest gap. Uh, that I've had over this stretch, but I'm now back to full regular content, three Dragons episodes per week, and two career mode episodes per week going forward. Well, anyway, getting into the series, we are now into the National Championships, period. But before we get into any racing, an update. An update starting with Horseback, a Mongolian continental team, a very small team. A team, though, that has a few decent riders in it but of course of those few decent riders that they have in fact of their top five guys only one of them is actually asian born that rider is billy chulenbat now billy chulenbat is actually somebody that you aren't going to be familiar with but i am quite familiar with because he has made my short list for dossiers each of the previous, I'd say, three seasons or two seasons at, at the least. I've come close to signing him multiple times, but if you look at his web, he's as good as he's going to get. And topping out at a 76 Mountain, 77 Hills is so close, especially when you add in the 76 acceleration. It is so close to making the expectation, the minimum standards, what it is that I'm looking to achieve and not quite especially when he is all but capped out except for in he'll get another couple points in hills making it you know pretty decent and like I said I've come very close he was like last season the next guy on my list that was the last one not signed but anyway Cholenbat Cholenbat's done something exceptional. Not that great. He just picked up his second career victory. He did so at the Tour of Slovenia. Punchy stage. Two riders escaping by mere seconds. And he finishing at the head of those two riders that escaped. It's only a stage win. It's nothing more. The Tour of Slovenia... 2HC. Shouldn't be relevant. Shouldn't matter. I've done it multiple times. Multiple times. To no avail. Except that Mongolia has a popularity of just two. Or should I say had. As with that victory, it has been enough. We have seen a 2HC race come good and Billy Chulenbet of Mongolia in that tour of Slovenia victory has risen the popularity of cycling in Mongolia from a two to a three so a guy very much on my radar but just shy of where we need him to be for our team going forward has done something well for his nation and seen it climb a point so we are making progress once again through the hands of another team. I couldn't care less if it's not us doing it, though. I knew this guy was good, but not quite special enough. It's just Tour of Slovenia, but I'm glad he's pulled off the win and he's helping boost Mongolia going forward. Speaking of going forward, we've got some national championships to get into and get involved in, but our sponsor confidence, which was worrisome before, is very much not we're easily at 100 percent now and should remain there going forward and actually no i think that was the career mode one that had the worrying sponsor confidence it's been a few weeks since i've uh, well played any games as i've been out of the country so yeah let let's do some racing uh i don't know how much national championships i will get involved in i think one episode at most we'll do it and we'll uh We'll get on to further races down the calendar. With over 30 riders competing for 
the Kazakhstan Individual Time Trial Championship. It's a wide field. None of the field is particularly great at time trialing, and some are quite good at climbing, though. So keeping an eye on where we're at and what we might be able to do with this, Islamov on a minus four, well, he's not looking good on a 60 time trial and just a 73 mountain, but big drops in race day condition hurting that quite a bit. Uh, we're going to focus more on Alpasov, who's already set off, which is worrying because, yeah, I didn't want him going that soon, but it does look like 75 is quite a bit softer than what we could manage to go here. So we'll try 77 now, maybe even harder. Alpasov gets a plus one. Quite helpful. He's a 79 mountain, which may be the best uh, or certainly one of the best that are, are here in terms of the climbing portion of uh, what we are up to. And he seems to be quite a quite a bit short of uh, where he could or should. Oh, Tarascan, dude, minus four draw for him is so rough. That's the last climb already. So we're, we're going to start pushing like an 86 for Islamov and see how that does. Uh, we, we are gonna start doing the same we, we've got to do the same these guys are clearly the 82 seems to be a lot closer to kind of the natural push of what we should have had as uh islamov pushing for the line trying to recover some time but clearly not doing great the time check he was 217 behind and he approaches the line in 20th at 421 down ouch Alpasov. Pushing for the line. He was 124 down. Definitely did not go hard enough. For 26k, that that is quite the uh, effort that you can seem to push for. And just, I did not expect that you could actually push anywhere near that hard. Terraskin, though, meanwhile, is not. So we, we seem to have measured his effort significantly better than the others. And he is in the top 10 after that first time check. So... Uh, can we sustain an effort for Tereskin to the finish line and get him at least into the top 10? Alpasov just 14th and a minute 48 down, now 15th already as Fedorov goes top of the time charts and Tereskin out of energy but pushing for the line. 500 meters to go, rounds the corner and stays in the top 10 but does not finish at the top. Uh, the race day condition, absolutely a factor, but me finding a balance, uh, and that's the thing, the AI with the bonuses that they have, overcoming that requires absolute perfection, and clearly balancing undulating runs over 26k, we shouldn't have gone anywhere near as hard as we did, but the way the undulation was working, increased the effort that you could supply. And by the time I found something relatively close to the effort that you needed, it was too late because the writer, who we were kind of honing that in on, had a minus four race day condition. Even a neutral zero could have easily shaved off a minute of that time, uh, time loss that he had, and brought him up into that top five. A positive race day condition probably could have overcome the top of the time charts, uh, but with a minus four. He was never going to fare well. And Alpasov, I just straight up butchered that one as we were trying to hone in the range. We just didn't push anywhere near hard enough. Hard enough. And so he ended up a half minute down on Terraskin where he could have easily finished quite a bit higher. The collection of the riders that we had, I think putting them together, probably could have won quite easily, but we don't have that perfect ideal rider. And 20k adventure for the Israeli individual time trial championships. And Schechter's going to set off first, but Alan is just behind him as we have a relatively small field. Uh, the 78 seems to be a little softer than what we could probably manage this through this one, but there was a bit of downhill through that sector. So a little hard to, to kind of judge overall. But uh, with the amount of energy that he has remaining, I definitely think we can be pushing harder than what we're doing. At uh, 20k, it's not too hard, and I'm trying to go fast for the sake of uh, presentation in that we don't need to be, you know, <laughs> lingering in these events very long, which is making it that much harder to get things just right. But clearly, uh, lower mid-80s is possible. 
Uh, let's see what an 86 is going to look like with Allen. So Schechter is, yeah, negative race take. In fact, it's negatives for everyone but Allen, and Allen's terrible time trial list. So pushing the 87, Lieberman already catching up to Schechter. Lieberman is first place at the first checkpoint, so that's good. Uh, Schechter, meanwhile, is third overall at the final checkpoint and can push quite hard to the finish line. 99 from there, and Allen, uh, clearly we are not going anywhere near hard enough, so pushing him at a 90 pace towards the end, and he is going to come in at a 92 third overall. And Lieberman now pushing for the finish line. Is still first at the final checkpoint. It looks like we are going to get one here. And this is a relative... Uh, came up a little short on what I could push there at the end. But it's still there a minute ahead of Klein. Uh, in terms of competitiveness, there was like three riders uh, in addition to Lieberman who were all contenders in the overall for that one. There was four guys that were all really close in terms of ratings. I think Lieberman was a bit better of a climber of them, giving him, you know, a solid chance to uh, pull out the victory, and he did so. I really don't want to get bogged down in national championships for very long when they are not important. They're not very relevant to our overall goals or aims. So, and this one's probably going to do it for me. I'm going to uh, allow this to be kind of our last run as we go for the road race national championship uh, here in Kazakhstan 112 kilometers overall and after the initial uh, loop that we just completed we are now on a revolving circuit uh, the same hill that we're going to be hitting again and again and again there are six riders that we have allowed to escape they have a two and a half minute advantage and there are 24 here in the peloton i have three riders i have the overall top two favorites for this race we could and should do quite well with this one let's check in on the six that are away and what their climbing capabilities are as islamov our weakest of the three and somebody himself who is on the edge of the top 10 uh, and looking fairly decent with 70 stamina and 74 mountain today I think can handle things quite well. And a 72 downhill actually will help him uh, maintain this effort for quite some time. But let's check in on these six and see what it is that we have. We have a very weak mountain. Uh, 69 mountain with Omerzak. Omerzak is the strongest of the group. So only one guy there who looks like he could put up a sustained climbing effort for some time that will... Uh, keep Islamov at bay. You can see that when we hit the climb, even though Islamov is only putting in a 65 effort, which during the descent uh, allows them to pull out a bit of a gap, uh, the moment we hit that climb, he, without even really providing much of an effort, is pulling back time on those guys because they just do not climb well enough. Uh, now, a 65 effort is not going to put the field under much duress. Uh, but it's also not going to hurt Islamov, so it's going to keep those guys at a relatively decent gap. We're going to run a number of laps like this, and then start to put the foot down, because ultimately our climbing capability should allow us to break away from others, and we don't want it to come down to the final punch. I'd rather see the field split quite early, so uh, we'll, we'll let Islamov do a couple more laps, and then uh, we're going to speed things up. We also need to make sure we get water here at some stage. We do have one team looking like it wants to contribute, but not at this uh, rate of knots. We've already dropped her. No, he he crashed, and he's able to get back on. So that that really goes to show that uh, we aren't putting in a substantial effort here. Uh, now that we're in need of water, Terraskin can be the guy to go get that. Terraskin has a 75 mountain, 76 on the stamina and Alpasov. Galpasov might have recently leveled up. He's got a positive plus three race day condition here, giving him an 82 mountain, 84 stamina, uh, making him a heavy favorite. And we're seeing uh, a new group of riders on the attack. And this is where I was wanting to step things up anyway. So let's see what a 77 looks like. Uh, let's see what a 77 looks like here so we don't see ourselves getting dropped. 
It's 50k to go, so the water that we just got is good to uh, the end of this race. We had temporarily split the field there, so already that increased effort. A lot of guys are going, what? Uh, for now, the front group is holding us off. So let's speed this up. I might have to just kind of form the train and get going on the on the climbing here. 42k. Yeah, instantly, just like that, we've split off a number of riders. They regain contact for now. They have just enough in the legs, but you can see they're struggling to keep up with this sort of climbing pace. 40k. And once again, there's that split. Form the train. There we go. Four guys now seemingly per, uh, permanently dropped, and we're going to go in 85, and we're going to gel for Islamov. Time to start climbing in a way that's going to be hard for others to keep up and allow us to cover what's going on, because it's still two and a half minutes to the uh, front here, and we are down to four laps. Five and five at the front as one rider was dropped and picked up by the back group. They are separated by half a minute. For me, that's a good thing. Them coming together uh, would make them more dangerous. And that is quite the gap. And they have come together at the front, dropping one rider. Gap to him coming down quite quickly, which means they are on the edge. And we are definitely leaving riders behind here. 25k to go. The back two are still looking pretty good, but Islamov is not going to last a lot longer as he makes it through that lap. We're down to three to go. Tereskin, we're going to gel. Islamov will set us up for the next one. It's still 207 to the front group. I cannot believe that they have held off that long that well. Islamov is done. On to uh, Tereskin. 18k to go. Two and a half laps left here is all. And this is not quite gone according to plan. I'm really surprised that that front group has held off this long, this well. I have really underestimated the poor climbing capabilities of those riders uh, to withstand our pressure. I'm not used to being the team that is in this type of pursuit. 10k to go. We're splitting up this field. I mean, these guys are not keeping up with us. And a lot of the front riders, they are blowing up now. So uh, they are not keeping up with the pace that we are setting. Terraskin is going to go in 99 from here. Red bar is gone, but he's still going to be climbing at a pace that uh, many cannot keep up with. And setting up Alpasov for the final one. He's not that punchy either. And those front guys, I don't know how we're going to get back in this thing. I think I've misjudged this one. I thought keeping them at two minutes when they were weak climbers was just fine. Those guys attacking right as I decided to turn things up did not work in our favor. And we need to uh, now sprint here with Tarskin. If we're going to have any chance. It's still a minute 54 to the front rider. It's like one guy who has uh, really withstood the pressure. And we've split off the back seven, so it's just us now. And Taraskin leading out Alpasov, and Alpasov with 2k to go is going to begin his sprint, leaving behind those guys. But again, I don't think we're going to catch the front riders. 1.5k for Alpasov. He's got three riders just ahead of him that he is catching and seemingly going to be able to pass, uh, as he's got plenty of yellow bar. He's going to get past one anyway. And there's two more. Those Ormerzark, the one that I feared, but Fedorov. Okay. So those guys attacked right as I was deciding to go. Brzezinski Brzen has already won, so we are actually only competing for fourth place. Ugh, really disappointing on that part that I misjudged that because we could have and should have done better. But of course, as always in this game, it's you versus the AI entirely. And the AI came out winners, and I think I'm a little bit rusty. Uh, that's my first road race, obviously, in about a month. And... I certainly misjudge the capabilities of the reality being the four riders that got away because those three that finished ahead of us were among the four that attacked right as I in started increasing effort. Uh, 
and I should have taken that attack more seriously and definitely chased a bit harder because I didn't turn things up as severely as I could have or should have uh, on the occasion. Fourth place, certainly not bad, but under the circumstances, um, we should have won. So, yeah, my, my bad, for sure. Like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time focusing on the National Classics this year as you know we're finally into that Continental Pro and they are less relevant than before. We've got other things to focus our attention on. Now, the Classic season, as it's widely recognized as, is behind us. It ends prior to the National Championships. But there are some smaller, minor uh, World Tour Classics towards the tail end of the season. For instance, San Sebastian. Uh, we have the Bemmer Classics, uh, Breton Classic. We have the two Canadian races. And then the, of course, one that we're going to always get an invite to at this stage, the Tour of Guangxi. Those are still ahead of us. And then, of course, Japan, Japan Cycling Club. we got the Taihu Lake. We've got Tour of Britain, a couple of those 2HC races. So. Our season's not done yet, but a big chunk of the races that we had that were going to be impactful are behind us now. But these races that we have towards the tail end of the season, in all honesty, are ones that we're going to be more competitive in than the ones we were in prior because we were competing against your Matthew Vanderpools, your Wild Fan Arts, your top, top, top level classics riders. You're not going to have all of them at these minor races and the tail end of the season. You're gonna have some of them. And so it's it's still gonna be difficult to score top tens, top fives, but I think it's gonna be easier to score top tens and top fives than it was before. Now victories in those might be a different matter, but hopefully we can, you know, bag some points towards the tail end of the season. Speaking of points, we as a team are fifteenth with over two thousand world tour points. Uh, but in Continental, where I've largely neglected it so far this season, we are only 18th in the Continental rankings. But Super Prestige has us as the second highest of all Continental Pro teams, up in 15th place with just about 2,000 points as of right now. That is going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.